Alright guys, today we're going to react to Philip DeFranco for the third day in a row. He only uploads weekdays, but you know, uh, you know, his video looks like a good video to react to. If you guys don't know, I, I do skip through the video when, uh, you know, and, and, but we do uh, react to every story that he talks about. So let's just get into it, guys. Today, we're talking about Hurricane Idalia sinking Florida, the debate over this boy's backpack making national news, credit card companies don't think people are paying enough, people are banning kids and killing dogs. We're going to talk about all that and so much more on today's brand new Philip DeFranco show, you daily dive into the news, so make Make sure you subscribe and let's just get into it. Make sure you're subscribed and let's just jump into it. Starting with, welcome to everyone. Oh, he said jump into it. Oops. Didn't know it, the terminology exactly, but... Pretty close, right guys? Pretty close. Everyone's favorite game show, Is It Racist? Da -da -na, da -na -na, da -na -na. But people online right now are debating, is this image racist? Because right, at the center of this story, you got a 12 year old boy who showed up to his Colorado Springs public charter school with a patch featuring this on his backpack. And if you're unfamiliar, it's the Gadsden flag. As it, I think it's kind of like an edgy flag. Like, right, that famous image of the rattlesnake with the words don't tread on me emblazoned across the bottom. And while it actually originated as an anti-British symbol during the Revolutionary War. I mean, it's like libertarianism. I actually like it. I apologize. It's not that edgy, guys. It's, it's cool. It's cool. It has since been appropriated by a bunch of right-wing and libertarian groups. Though notably, that also including some white supremacists. And so this kid's school reportedly asked him to remove the patch. And when he didn't, he was removed from class. And that brings... I, I didn't know it was right-wing. Okay, okay us to a meeting between the kid's mom and the school's assistant principal in which the latter says the reason you do not want the flag that way is due to its origins with the yeah right i didn't know right wing actually was a uh, sponsoring that flag whatsoever guys Sheesh. okay okay slavery and slave trade and the mom then counters it has nothing to do with slavery that's like the revolutionary war patch that was okay. displayed when they were fighting the british i am here to enforce the policy that was provided okay. by the district okay. and definitely you have every right to not agree with it then reportedly after this video the district emails the mom reiterating its position they link to an article that argues that the flag is often seen as racist because its creator was a slave owner and it's commonly flown alongside trump flags and the confederate battle flag the district then also citing a 2014 case in which a postal worker accused a colleague who wore a gadsden flag hat of racial discrimination though in that case the equal employment opportunity commission didn't find that the flag was a racist symbol and only concluded that it has been quote sometimes interpreted to convey racially tinged messages in some contexts but is it, does it do that, guys? Do you think it's racist? Ultimately, <laughs> what we see when the story and the video... I thought it just meant libertarianism. ...around this kid come out is a lot of people outraged over an alleged First Amendment violation. And almost immediately, you see the school board calling an emergency meeting, walking back its demands that the student remove the patch, with it then claiming that the real issue wasn't the Gadsden flag, but rather a dozen other patches showing semi-automatic weapons, and adding that once... Hey, bro, well, why go out of your way to... To display all those patches, man. Like, was he trying to be controversial, guys? I feel like, you know, maybe he had a plan here, guys. So those or, or the parents did. Patches were removed, the student returned to class without incident. And then, in a pivot so sharp they broke their ankles, the district proclaimed, From Vanguard's founding, we have proudly supported our Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the ordered liberty that the Americans have enjoyed for almost 250 years. The Vanguard School recognizes the historical significance of the Gadsden flag and its place in history. And while a lot of this was focused on conservative media, even had Democratic Governor Jared Polis defending the flag and saying, The Gadsden flag is a great, uh, iconic American flag. Other kids have uh, LGBT flags on their backpacks. Others have flags of major political as it when i was in elementary school i didn't no one had flags on their backpack or anything that's an expensive thing to get guys parties and so as far as what happens from here you have the student's mom saying he missed three days of school over all this it's possible she'll pursue legal action but with all that said i gotta ask you where do you land on this story and why and then i want you to take a look at this painful i didn't did not did not expect that guys adorable puppy oh, oh, oh. Guess what? tens of thousands didn't expect an adorable puppy kind of video to, for 
that uh, Bill DeFranco would chill. The dogs, just like Fluffy here, are getting murdered as we speak. Let me explain. By this year, animal intakes of both private... What? Are you serious? Oops. Private and public shelters are expected to reach a three-year high, according to the Shelter Animals Count database. And that because adoption rates are down, with the number of stray animals, mostly dogs, being up, as well as owners abandoning their pets. And there are a few different reasons for what we're seeing. One being that there was a pause in spay and neuter surgeries during the COVID lockdown. That increasing the animal population. And then when you had lockdowns lifting, the end of eviction moratoriums, rising rents and inflation, even for dog food, it made it more expensive to own a pet. Plus, if you think the general housing shortage is bad, imagine trying to find pet-friendly housing that accepts your dog's breed and size and doesn't over charge you with fees. So to cope with the flood of animals, we've seen shelters squeeze multiple dogs into a single kennel, even putting some into pop-up crates. But still, I mean, bro, we got a dog overpopulation, guys. Did not ex I mean, we should probably expect that. When I went to the pound, there's just so much dogs just straight up in in the cages, guys. Like literally, like hundreds of dogs. Well, it's not enough, and so we're seeing shelters around the country, and many of them for the first time in years, just straight up killing these dogs because they simply don't have enough space. With about 51,000 dogs being euthanized from January to July of 2023, which is a 37% increase from the same period in 2022, which means that overall, just under 10% of all dogs entering shelters were put down. Now, notably, that number varied wildly by state, with the South generally euthanizing more animals than the North. New Mexico, for example, killed nearly a quarter of its dogs, whereas in South Dakota, they only killed 0.5%. And if right... Dude, 23%? What? That's quite quite a large margin, though. Right now, you're thinking, Jesus Christ, how could they do this? These mon monsters. Let me remind you, yes, this all sucks, but it's not like these workers at these shelters want to commit this massacre. You have people noting that when shelters... As euthanasia at animal shelters is not a new thing, guys. It happens, I guess. Just like it happens at, like, the vet hospital, right, guys? get overpopulated they get loud and the animal's quality of life suffers especially for bigger dogs dang bro so they're like putting them out of their misery it seems man you you guys think they should just let them go free though let me know in the comments below <laughs> letting them go free that, that that could be a problem for us though like you know then there'd be lo a lot of them just running around. They're, they're, it could be dangerous, basically. Who so are both harder to adopt out and more prone to kennel stress, where they spin in place, smear feces on the wall, and wear down their claws trying to dig out. And so at a certain point, the shelter staff just has to choose between one horrible option and another. Now, of course, with this, the most obvious thing that you can personally do is to try to adopt some pets. So naturally, that's not feasible for a lot of people, and even for those who can do it. I mean, you're talking about years of responsibility, so think about it some, and not just because years like a, a good percentage of, of your life of responsibility guys not just years quite a while quite a while because you know some fucking idiot on the internet was talking to you about it you were like yes that's what i'm gonna do with my life especially as there are a number of people that don't think these things through and then they just abandon their pets and so with all of that to have any sort of meaningful change you have a lot of advocates arguing that that's why we need more funding for the shelter system to hold all these animals but with all that said the question i want to pass off to you is what do you think the solution here is to save fluffy and then the super wet hurricane idalia has officially made landfall in florida but the storm you said save fluffy oh my gosh <laughs> I thought Fluffy was like a cat's name, guys. He straight up said, say Fluffy. That's interesting. Yeah, I totally thought it was a cat's name, not a dog's name. Do you think it's a cat's or a dog's name? Let me know in the comments below. I personally think it's a cat's name. I've never met a dog named Fluffy, but I've met cats named Fluffy. I've met quite a bit of cats named Fluffy. Not gonna lie. From coming ashore as a Category 3 hurricane, but by 10 a.m. local time, it was a Category 2. But notably, even if you're dealing with less of a hurricane, it's still a hurricane. There are serious threats. With the National Hurricane Center this morning describing it still as extremely dangerous, warning of catastrophic storm surge and destructive life-threatening winds, predicting some areas could be hit with dangerous and destructive waves and see up to 12 to 16 feet of flooding. you got storm surge warnings in effect for more than half of Florida's entire western coastline. Mandatory or at least voluntary evacuation orders have been placed in 30 of Florida's 67 counties. And we've already seen extensive flooding. With videos from local news outlets and meteorologists showing a fast-moving storm. Dang, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That hurricane looks like it's hitting uh, Florida a lot worse than California, guys. You know what I mean? 
It's wild. Surge in numerous areas totally submerged in water where the panhandle meets the peninsula has especially been slammed. And that's actually a really important thing here because according to the Weather Channel, there have only been three hurricanes in that region since the 1850s. And Idalia is now tied as the strongest hurricane to actually hit that area. And there's reporting that this hurricane could actually break storm surge records for the region. And as places like Axios have explained, that region is uniquely susceptible to storm surge flooding due to the shape of the coastline and shallow continental shelf, right? Forces the water to pile up along the shore. Also, as of early Wednesday morning, 260,000 customers in Florida didn't have power. As far Dang, bro, it's knocking out power as well, guys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, when a Hurricane uh, Hillary hit it, us, guys, I did not hear of any power knocking, knocking out. But then again, California was in a drought before. Um, when, like all last year, I kept hearing about there was a drought in the news, guys. And um, yeah, like so we needed the water. The water got absorbed in the ground and stuff, guys. Especially where I live, because there, because there's a just so where I live is just mostly desert, but like in certain areas there is like a lot of um. There's actual like a uh, mini lakes formed, I guess you could say, from just like the rainfall and stuff. As far as the total scope of damage and destruction, we don't know yet. Which on that note, as I'm recording this, a hurricane's beginning to migrate out of Florida. By around 11 a.m. local time, the center of the storm had moved to Georgia and the hurricane was downgraded to a Category 1. It's now projected to continue traveling north towards coastal North and South Carolina. And it's believed that Idalia will continue to weaken and will likely be downgraded to a tropical storm by the time that it reaches the Carolina coast. But if you've ever lived in those places, you know that a lot of damage can still be done. Which is actually why the governors of Georgia and both Carolinas have declared states of emergency. With officials warning about threats of intense winds, heavy rain, flash flooding, surges along the coast, and the possibility of tornadoes. And so if you are in one of these affected areas, obviously, yes, hope for the best, but keep your eyes and ears open. Please be safe, please be smart, and I'll also be linking to resources down below. And then, you know, working out consistently can be hard. Trust me, I know. But that's why I want to thank Copilot for helping me through this journey and for being because Copilot takes the thinking out of working out. Their coaches are able to schedule workouts. Oh, okay. He's got like a workout at it. That's pretty. Man, he's always promoting different companies and they're always got like some interesting pro so products. Follow. One of the best things about Copilot is that I'm not doing this alone. Like when I was doing the dumbbell bench one arm row and my leg was too forward or when they told me to slow down on my descents on my hammer curls, raise weight on bicep curls in order to get me out of what I felt was like a plateau on my biceps. And between the app and my coach, Devin, I couldn't feel more supported. You just start with an easy onboarding call, connect to a coach, and then they make customized workouts Dang, your own coach all right let's, let's skip that let's skip that guys a positive and then this is one of the reasons people argue we need adults only flights right, that video has gotten over 5 million views since it was posted on twitter yesterday and even more adult only flights i've never heard uh, somebody propose something like that guys you think that's a w let me log off the runescape real quick or views on TikTok. Right, small kid wearing a bright flashing light up hat on a dark plane full of people while the adult sitting next to them. <laughs> guys, that is, that's that's pretty over the top, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like <laughs> Why is it polite dark? It's around like nothing's wrong. And many, many people on the internet were not happy. The comments ranging from they literally could have given someone a seizure who does. Bro, I felt like I was getting one just watching it, guys that and imagine trying to sleep and all of a sudden the plane turns into a rave oh their kids gonna learn some new words when i'm done talking to her parents and some folks are just horrible parents and horrible people in general and so because of this type of let's call it tomfoolery along bro first of all flights are annoying in general because you know we're just so packed up in there with a classic baby screaming and other general irritants of having children on airplanes it's led to more than just an online debate but also one airline creating an adults only section on their flights with quarantine airlines a turkish dutch carrier putting out a press release recently saying they're testing out an adults only section on their flights between amsterdam and curacao and the way it works is at the front of the all right guys we're gonna skip this actually no we won't the flight there will be over 90 seats reserved for passengers 16 and up okay they're gonna make uh, adult only flights maybe Visa and MasterCard prepare to hike fees. All right, let's see it. Really good news. Everything's about to get a little more expensive. I know you were thinking, man, shit's just too affordable right now. Good news. Visa and MasterCard are about to bump up their fees. Because when businesses reportedly paid them over $93 billion in credit card fees just last year, Visa and MasterCard were like, ah, but wouldn't it be better if... How's that good news, guys? That's bad news, man. That's bad news. I know, I know the banks give us free cards and stuff, but, or the companies do, but they're, they're straight up hiking the fees now. 
if it was more. And so these increases are reportedly set to happen in October and April, and one consulting company estimates that these price hikes could lead to merchants paying an additional $502 million in fees. A billionaire corporation is doing billionaire corporation things. Let's, um read the next story guys map and its neighbors are pissed because china's new map shows them claiming part of india with india saying the map is absolutely absurd that their claims have no basis and china's map also shows them infringing on malaysia's maritime border so malaysia has rejected their unilateral claims also china's map claims part of russia japan vietnam bhutan indonesia the philippines and all of taiwan well for some it may feel silly that countries get upset over what are essentially just lines on a piece of paper but those lines on a map for a lot of people they represent people's identities their validation things they fought thousands of years for and then it feels like every Every week, there's a new coup, right? Because in what's clearly becoming a trend lately, military officers in the African country of Gabon just launched a coup and claimed to rep eh, bro. represent the entire armed forces, making that announcement sometime today after the neighbors are pissed because China's new map shows them claiming part of India with India saying, hey, bro, China, China's claiming India, I guess. I don't know. China, by the way. Okay, okay. Military officers in the African country of Gabon just launched a coup and claimed to represent the entire armed forces, making that announcement sometime today after the electoral board there officially announced that President Ali Bongo won his third term. But the military was having absolutely none of that. And in an address to the nation today, officers said that the results were nullified and that President Ali Bongo was under house arrest. They then went on to say that state institutions were dissolved, borders will be closed, and that they're working out... So more st war-related stuff. I don't know even... He's talking about but guys but that's a video like comment subscribe uh, check out philip defranco in the description sadly so many people get dogs that they know nothing about from backyard breeders who try to make a quick but hey if if we got a verified like youtuber with a dog profile picture yeah he's definitely a dog focused youtuber uh, i'm not gonna read all that it's a long but like a super long post oh my gosh the MasterCard Visa hike is pretty scary when you realize they spend more than $3.6 billion for lobbying a year and the recent push for cashless businesses. Okay, okay. And someone who's approaching their 100th flight and, ha and who has seizures. I'd have been hitting that call attendant button so fast. Options to have them turn it off now. L turn ca the cabin lights on to lessen the issue or we're going to have a medical emergency. And uh yeah those were way too flashy lights and why the heck why they turn off the lights as well inside the cabin i have no clue but um that's a video like comment subscribe check out philip defranco in the description i do all my reactions live on twitch so if you want to come through say hi you are more than welcome and i'll see you guys next one peace out everyone